Hi, I'm Brian, a Salesforce and Pardot consultant with Rotive. In this video, I'm going to show you how to update prices for products in bulk. This is something that has come up with a number of our customers, and it can be uh, really counterintuitive to understand how you can update all these prices at once. So the first thing you need to understand is how the price and the product are actually related. Go to your products tab in Salesforce. In this case, we've got 17 different products. You'll notice that the price is not shown in this list. If we click into one of these products, there actually isn't any price on the product record either. The thing that has the price is something called a price book entry record. So when we click on related, we can see that this product, this, you know, diesel generator has two price book entries, one called standard and one called standard price book, which is a little bit confusing, but more often this would probably be, you know, United States pricing versus Canadian pricing, or maybe we have private sector pricing versus public sector pricing. So it is not too unusual to see a, a org that has multiple prices for a specific product. And that's why we have these different uh, price book entries and that's where the price is stored. So we have a price book entry record that has the price and then that's related to the product record. If you want to update all the prices for your products, you need to get the price book entry. You can't just get a list of products and do that, do that bulk update. Now that we understand this, the first thing to do is to run a report to give you all of those price book entry records. So if you come over to reports and click new report here, we might search for report types for something called price book entry, but we don't have one. We have price books with products. We'll start with that. If this can't get us the data that we need, we can create a new report type to make sure that we can get that data. All right. So we're creating this report for price books and products. And let's see if this is going to give us that price book entry information we need. I opened up the field panel on the left-hand side, and I can see that I've got price book information. I've got some price information and I've got some product information, but I don't see anything here that talks about a price book entry record. Cause ultimately what we need to get is the ID for each of those price book entry records. And of course the price so that we can update all those records based off their ID at once, but we don't have that here. So the way to you know, fix that is to create a new report type. So let's go into Salesforce setup, search for report types in the quick find here, click on report types and hit continue. It's just a little, nice little explanation of what report types are and, and how to think about building them. I'm going to click new report type, and now we can choose the primary object. And we've got all these different objects within Salesforce that we can create a report for that we may not have had a report type for previously. So I'm going to look for price book entries. There it is. So right above price books are its entries. We'll start with that. I'm just going to name it price book entries. This has data on price book entries and products. And then this last option here is store in category. This is, you know, which section in that report type pop-up we want this report type to be available for. And uh, we have one called price books, products, and assets. So that sounds pretty good. Put it there. And then deployment status, uh, this marks whether or not that report type is going to be accessible to your users. If it's in development, it's just uh, accessible to you, but I'm going to mark it as deployed. So anybody else could use it. Click next. And because we start with our primary object, we can then add on additional objects to that report type. In this case, the only option we have is price adjustment schedules, which we just, we don't need that for now. So we'll just leave that off. The default is fine. And I'm going to hit save. And then the default, uh, settings for which fields are selected is also just fine. We'll leave that as it is. All right. We've got a new report type. So let's come back into the Salesforce user area. Click new report. And there we go. Price book entries is now available. Finally. So now we can get a report of all of our prices that we want to get out of Salesforce so we can then update them. So I'm opening that field list on the left again. I'm going to add price book entry ID and product name and list price. There we go. Just hit refresh. So, okay. So here's a list of our products, our price book entry ID, 
and the list price associated with them. Now this is for all price books. So if you have multiple price books and you don't want to update them all at once, make sure that you add an appropriate filter for that. So in my case, I'm going to add a filter on price book, price book name here, and we'll say standard price book is what I want. Hit apply. There you go. That looks pretty good. I'm going to run this report. And now this is getting me the data that I really care about. I got the name of the product. I have its current price and I have the ID of the price book entry record. That's what I really need. So that looks pretty good. I'm going to export this as a CSV. Sometimes it's just a little bit easier to use instead of Excel, but Excel file would be fine as well. Let's just say we download that in Excel, you change the prices to whatever you want. And now you have your updated CSV file. Now we need to use that to update Salesforce. The way to update Salesforce is with using something called dataloader.io. It's a really useful tool. As long as you have the enterprise edition or an addition with API access, you'll be able to use dataloader.io to update all sorts of different records in the system that you might not typically update through import wizard or the other methods. So I'm going to click the button here. It says launch dataloader.io. Hit confirm, and then you can log in with Salesforce. Here's our interface for dataloader.io. Now, I think we can upload or update up to 10,000 records per month on the free version. If you need more records than that, uh, there's, there's paid tiers that you can get. In the middle here is some education on how to import or export or delete records through dataloader.io. And in the upper left, we have a new task. So for new task here, I'm going to click import because we want to pull in some data. And I'm not going to insert, I'm actually going to update because those product records and those product price book entry I, records are already in the system. So I'm searching for price book entry. There it is. Hit next. Now we can upload our CSV. So here's my CSV with, you know, updated values for the, for the list price. And we can see here that list price already matched just fine and price book entry ID already matched as well. We don't need to match product name um, and actually we shouldn't. So it's fine just to ignore that. All we really need is the ID of that price book entry and the price. Those are both mapped. Looks great. Then we hit next. And this, the default settings here are just fine. And we'll click save and run. There we go. It's now running. The task has been queued. If we hit refresh, it's probably already done. And there's our results, 17 successes and zero errors. You can click on that link to 17 successes and see what was updated, or you can always go back into Salesforce and check that all of your prices have been changed. So I hope that helps. In conclusion, run report on price book entry records. Make sure you get the ID of those records and the price, update them in Excel, and then use dataloader.io to import them back into Salesforce. Thanks for watching.